likely. That would be nice though. Mm. That's a very fine balancing act we're doing. Hold on. We're trying to adjust these cameras, you guys. Ah! Look up, there we go. Okay. Let's go side. Hold on, give us a second. Right. And then, um, you guys, just to give you a quick, what we're doing. So we have this Gutsy Health membership stuff where our members can ask questions throughout the week and then we answer them and this isn't gonna work. So I'm just gonna have to hold it like this and we're gonna have to talk to like two cameras. And so anyways, our members ask questions and so we're gonna be answering them about once a week. As we get more members, we'll do like maybe twice a week Q and A's. Uh, so I have a list of questions and if there's time, let's do more questions. Um, but just to quickly tell you guys, because I've had, I've had a lot of people say, hey, I can't seem to sign up for the membership. Well, that's because we are revamping it right now. So the membership, oh, where do you get the cookbook? Um, just go to my link in my bio and then you can get it there. So, um, but with the membership, you guys, um, it's being revamped and should be released sometime this, the middle of this month. I have a ton of people working on it and it's gonna be amazing because it's gonna have the menus, it's gonna have the recipes every week, the, and there's also gonna be like a weekly to-do checklist. So week one is like cleaning out your pantry. It gives you a list of things to throw out and a list of things to replace it with. Week two is cleaning out your fridge. Okay, so take these foods out of your fridge and replace them with these like condiments and these vegetables and these things. So it's gonna be really awesome. It's, it, I have a whole team helping me put all of this uh, stuff together. So as soon as it's all ready to be launched, I'll let you guys know because lots of people, the reason why I'm putting this together is a lot of people wanna make healthy lifestyle changes and they want them to last but they can only do it for like a week or two. And so I'm trying to structure it so that it's sustainable and easy. So with that being said, let's launch into questions. So Tris, yes. some, and members here on Facebook, sorry, there's two cameras going at the same time. You guys, if you want to, um, if you members, if you guys have questions, please like just shout them out and we'll rate them in your comments. If you guys have questions, we'll try and answer too. But um, some questions that we got this week is, I would like you guys to personally do, uh, to personally talk about what do you guys do for mindfulness? Talk about how, when we think we are relaxing on our screens, we still might not be activating the parasympathetic nervous system. Tristan, that's your department. So whoopsie. So I'm gonna be camera girl and you're gonna talk. All right, so first off, um, assuming Jenny doesn't fall asleep at eight o'clock, we are going to be recording a new episode of the podcast tonight. Um, but I also want to make it a live, so it'll be a streamed. Oh, so and we're doing another live. We're doing another live. Yeah. And so you'll definitely want to check that out if you are looking for kind of the mindfulness, um, anxiety reduction type stuff, because we're going to be going into that a lot, talking about how you can deal with uh, just stress a lot better yeah um but what we do personally so i'm gonna put a plug in right now for an app that i think is just absolutely fantastic it's called the daily shifts um and this daily app is shifts, it's guys. available for uh iphones and androids i believe who's it that made it doug cartwright, doug cartwright. uh-huh like he is so amazing i i first found out about him on woke with wesley such a cool dude so cool and his app is phenomenal yeah so he basically he walked away from a massive business um in order to pursue something that just felt more um like himself and so we ended up creating this app and and the app is amazing because it, it takes you through the process every day of creating a more intentional present focused lifestyle right. and it's really really low commitment like it takes a few minutes in the morning a couple minutes in the afternoon and then a few more minutes in the evening time and and as you get into it more and you build up your momentum, it gives you more and more stuff that you can do. Um, but even at its like max settings where you're doing all the things, it's really like less than a 10 minute commitment every day. 
Um, but, uh, but it has a bunch of mindfulness pieces in it. It talks about gratitude. Um, it does have some meditation stuff. But, but really, the, the whole point of it is it gets you reflecting. It gets you mm -hmm. thinking a little bit more about what's going on internally and how you can connect with the world externally a little bit better. So that's so, the Daily Shifts app, you guys, for everyone that's app. checking in right mm -hmm. now, Daily Shifts. Um, another thing I want to add to this is, um, you know, when you swim in a dirty pool, you get dirty. It's the same thing with our minds. When we are constantly reading negativity, um, you don't have to be completely like closed off to the world. But, um, and I'm going to share it when I saw a therapist back in the day. Oh, sorry. Oopsie. When I saw a therapist back in the day to like help me deal with my stress, she said, you need to go on like a social media fast. Like don't go into Facebook. Don't read things that are like negative and that kind of stuff. It's okay to give yourself permission to not read the media. Like the media is designed to provoke emotional responses. And not because the more, good ones. Not good ones. Because the more clicks they get, the more emotional responses they get, the more money they make. They are not here to help you. And so it's really hard, it's really hard in today's age to um, get really good, reliable information. For instance, um, like, do, uh, I don't even know if we should get into some of the stuff. No, okay, we, we won't, we won't. We'll, we'll save it for the podcast. Um, but you guys, like, it, it's, it's really hard to get really good information right now because everyone's an expert in everything. And, um, and just, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. Even if the information is good, that's not the same as helpful. Yeah. And, and what we're talking about here is surround yourself with things that create positive feelings inside because your positive feelings are the whole point. Right. Um, we'll talk about that more tonight, but, but that's really all that matters. Mm -hmm. No matter what kind of practice you decide to do or what sort of things you decide to try, the goal is to feel good. The right. goal is to feel positive emotions inside of yourself. And I'm not talking about things that give you pleasure, right? Eating candy bars does give you pleasure. That's not the same thing as feeling good inside. So find those things and do those things. If you need ideas, tune in tonight. We'll we'll have some of those ideas, but uh, that's that's really the key. Maybe put a time cap on like, I'm gonna read media for 30 minutes, like set a timer. And yeah. be like, I'm gonna go to these news sources that portray this in a healthy manner for me. And then you read it for 30 minutes and then you're done. One thing I like to do with my phone a ton is when I'm not using it, it's on airplane mode and it's in a different room. If it's on me, if it's not in airplane mode, I'm constantly checking it. I'm constantly interrupting my own thought processes to, to plug in to information out there. And it's just information overload. Mm -hmm. So so boundaries is really important with especially what's going on. Um, and just start reading books that are very empowering. Um, the second part of that is being on screens, activating the parasympathetic nervous system. So we've spoken about this a lot. Make sure at nighttime when things start getting dark, like turn your phones off, you know, don't watch TV, read books, um, or put that yellow screen thing on your, what is it called, the twilight mode or something on cell phone so you're not getting that blue. That blue shine on your cell phone, you guys, stimulates your brain. Yeah, you so can do that. So it keeps the, you awake at night. There's the blue so light filters, but they're, you know, they, they work a little bit, but it's mm -hmm. not gonna be as effective as just not, not having the screen in the right. first place. But really, when it comes to activating the parasympathetic nervous system, what's really important is that you are completely connected with yourself. And that is very difficult to do when you are on social media. Mm -hmm. Because even if you are enjoying yourself, so to speak, which I don't know how much people actually enjoy being on social media, to be totally honest, but even if you do believe that you're enjoying yourself, you are not connected with yourself. So you are not creating that sense of everything is safe, therefore my body can go into healing and regeneration mode, right. which is the whole point of the parasympathetic nervous system. So, so turning off everything, right, and just being still is the, the important thing mm -hmm. to do. There. But it's not enough to just be still, you also have to have thoughts that contribute to that sense of all is well. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where the different meditation things and you know, books and all those sorts of things come in. That makes me really happy you put your phone on airplane mode when you're sleeping. Everyone should do that, you guys. Like, make sure it's on airplane mode, make sure your Bluetooth is switched off, your Wi-Fi, like your Wi-Fi is switched off, all of those things. You don't need that on while you're sleeping. It's gonna disturb your sleep, agitate your body, all that kind of stuff. 
Okay, would love to hear more about the Hocket. Also, I want to know what is the difference between infrared sauna therapy and regular sauna therapy. So you guys, ozone therapy is, um, ozone, I, I've spoken a lot about this, but it's, it's kind of like oxygen on steroids and it oxidizes, the immune system utilizes ozone to create oxidative stress when it's, so the immune system uses oxygen like a gun, right? It shoots and oxidizes bad things, bacteria, viruses. So ozone, um, like let's pretend those white blood cells are um, shooting with like a BB gun. They're shooting bad bacteria and viruses with a BB gun. Well, ozone comes in and replaces that BB gun with like a, fl a, a fire, a flamethrower, right? So it's so much more intense. And not only that, but ozone itself, it, it, it oxidizes the cell membrane of like viruses and like bacteria, that cell wall and it kills them. And so that's what ozone does. It's also extremely anti-inflammatory, but not only that, it helps, it stimulates the mitochondria of the cells to produce more energy, to produce more like, like ATP. And so the mitochondria is like the, this, the, the, um, the battery of every single cell. So it kind of charges the battery, makes sure that the battery has more energy. There's so many wonderful things to ozone. I did, I have a safe story on Ebola. And I think everyone should watch it. It's on my, it's in my Instagram. So everyone that's watching on Facebook, um, just go to my safe story on the Ebola, where we talk about how they were actually utilizing therapy to cure people with Ebola in, in Africa. And it's, it's wonderful and it's heart, it's a heart wrenching story at the same time. So I don't, let's not go into that right now because we don't want to talk about politics. Um, but yeah, it, ozone's, ozone's phenomenal. I, my dream, honestly, like one of my dreams, you guys, is like in the next year or so, start educating women and, and men on utilizing ozone therapy in their own homes. Like my hope is that there's like one person in every neighborhood that has like an ozone machine and whoever's sick on that street comes and utilizes the ozone machine and drinks ozone water and rubs ozone oil all over them or whatever. Like, wouldn't that be so cool? Like, that'd be so cool. I hope they don't make ozone machines illegal in the future because that would be really sad. So that's ozone. Just oh. jumping jumping back real quick. Someone asked, will, will alarms still work when your phone's in air? Yes. Absolutely will. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about that. It'll still they wake totally you up do. on time. Mm -hmm. Everything will be fine there. So, yep. um, so the Hockett also has an infrared sauna built into it. So in addition to the ozone, you're also getting high heat but heat that is also able to penetrate mm -hmm. deep into your tissues and that has all kinds of really positive benefits as well everything from cardiovascular health to immune health yeah. um, now we haven't verified this information but we have heard from multiple sources that um, with the whole COVID-19 thing that at 133 degrees for 15 minutes um, you can kill off the COVID-19 I don't know if that still applies once it's inside of your system, but we do know that um, the the infrared saunas in particular are awesome for killing off yeah. all sorts of pathogens in the body, not just viruses. So also, it just stimulates your immune system when heat is like created in the body, like a fake fever. It stimulates the immune system, right? That's why we get fevers to like get it activated. And so that's what sauna does, really. Now, there's the near, far, and medium infrared, right? Mm -hmm. And so near does what? Do you know? Um, it, it, it's all just a difference in you know, penetrative like power. Like penetrating how like deep it we goes into your We don't, we don't need to cells. go into details on it. Um, but uh, there's also a thing that happens in the sauna, which is that heat shock proteins are created. And these heat shock proteins help your body to be more efficient in the sense that they help recycle bad cells, bad parts, so to speak, and uh, keep everything working really well. Um, and these heat shock proteins, they, they are called that because they tend to show up when we hit just the right amount of heat where it's slightly uncomfortable for us. Yeah. So if you have access to a sauna, that's sort of your goal. You don't wanna like push yourself so hard that it crashes your body, especially if you do have health stuff going on. Yeah. But you wanna to get to that point where it feels like a challenge, right? Similar to a moderate workout, right? right. It's like, okay, I can do this, but wow, this is, this is this tough, is right? Yeah. Um, that's when you're getting all those really great heat sock proteins being produced. So that's uh, another really great thing out there. 
And that's um, probably the, the biggest difference between the infrared sauna and the regular sauna is that with the regular sauna, you need really, really high temperatures to get to that state. Whereas with the infrared saunas, um, you can hit it at a much lower temperature. For a lot of people, like 120 degrees in the infrared sauna is gonna do the trick. Right. With a regular sauna, you might be looking at you know 160, 180. Some people, it's like 190 degrees before they're really feeling it. So, um, another question, and if you guys have questions here, Facebook and Instagram, start shooting them because we're answering our last question here about common misconceptions around fat, especially um, saturated fat. So, if you guys have questions, start shooting them here, um, and we will we'll we'll start answering them because we have a few more minutes. So yeah. the next question was common misconceptions in health. So one of our members asked, you should, she, she's reading the mind gut connection or brain gut connection. I keep forgetting mind which book it's like. Mind gut. Mind gut, brain gut the brain gut connection. Brain gut. And the, the, the guy who is writing that book or wrote that book, he is very pro um, plant-based oils and not animal-based like oil, like saturated fat. Um, he says it's in, inflammatory. Whereas we teach um, differently, um, so so she wanted us to answer that question. I'm gonna let you go first, and then I'll go second. Okay. Um, so why? Because, because sorry, to like <laughs> fats are very very controversial, you guys, and that's why we have this whole like vegan movement and vegetarian movement, and then car like it's it's so polarized. So let's try and like uncover this world a little bit. Okay, so to understand why people would even suggest that saturated fats are bad for us, we first have to go back in time, like 50 years, uh, even more than 50 years at this point, and um, see what happened historically. Back in the, we'll say the early 1950s, the average woman over the age of like 30 had a total cholesterol level of 240. Um, and they also had like zero heart disease. And then, uh, starting about the, we'll say the mid 60s, we, this trend really caught on in the world where we started to believe that fats were bad for us. Um, there were uh, some key figures in there, Ansel, was it Ansel Keys? Anyway, um, there were some people that popularized this idea that uh, fat makes us fat and that, that also gives us heart disease. So they basically said, you need to get away from the fat and you need to have more carbs. And so everyone went on these low fat, high carb diets. And over the next 50 years, really, I guess the next 30 years in particular, our heart disease rates started to skyrocket. And it wasn't because we weren't following these new low fat guidelines. In fact, we were doing a really good job of it. Um, the issue was that we were no longer getting any of the protective fats into our diets anymore. And so there are two really important factors here when it comes to cholesterol and heart disease. One is that dietary cholesterol does not correlate very strongly with our actual blood cholesterol. And the second fact is that our blood cholesterol does not correlate very strongly with heart disease. Right. So that whole that whole system is totally upside down. What does correlate with that is sugar and simple carbs. Inflammation. So inflammation. Inflammation. Because, because ingesting sugar creates an inflammatory response. So what really happens, and I have done an IGTV on fats, you guys, um, and we also have a podcast episode called Big Fat Lies. So if you guys are interested in learning more about fats, go ahead and watch those two or listen to those two things. Um, but uh, what what sugar actually does is, you know, fat is a transport molecule in the body. You've heard LDLs, HDLs, VLDLs, they all transport molecules to like damaged tissues and they deliver like fat soluble vitamins to help heal them, right? And other things, it's way more complex than that. But what happens when it goes to that damaged tissue and it like kind of latches on to deliver and then it kind of sloughs off, right? Well, what happens when it latches onto that and then you eat a ton of sugar, it oxidizes that latching on, for lack of a better word, and then it sticks and it stays and it gets sticky. And so what the problem, it's not the fat because the fat is doing the transporting of these healing molecules. It's the presence of the cholesterol with high amounts of sugar and processed foods that is provoking this inflammatory response. So that is why 
I don't know. That's why, but then fat got demonized instead of the sugar. We, we failed to look upstream of the process and just looked at the site and we're like, oh, it's, it's the fat and it's not. Yeah, it's saturated fat in particular, um, but you still will have a lot of people talking about, oh, well, polyunsaturated fats are so great for you, so you need to just get tons of polyunsaturated fats. Now, polyunsaturated fats may have their benefits, but they also have weaknesses, and the very biggest weakness is that they are super unstable, super unstable. meaning that they can oxidize quickly, meaning that they can become very inflammatory. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times this happens before it even gets to your house, it happens during the production and the transportation process. Um, and that's why we never recommend any of the industrial seed oils, right. um, which are high in polyunsaturated fats. That's going to be your sunflower oils, your soybean oils, canola, your canola um, you know, all the, all the things yeah. you find in prepared foods, in restaurant produced foods as well. Mm -hmm. um, they're very, very inflammatory because they're just not stable enough. Um, there are some sources of polyunsaturated fats that I believe are better for you. That's going to be fish primarily. Um, they can be a really good source of that that I think is still a little bit more stable. But you do have people out there who think there is zero conditions where these polyunsaturated fats are okay. Um, we tend not to take that extreme of a view, but something to keep in mind. So don't worry about the saturated fats. Worry about more the source of your fats. Um, meaning get, get your fats from whole foods. Don't get it from overly refined sources. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be your best bet for keeping yourself nice and healthy. I can't even remember what the original question was anymore. Uh, it was just about the misconceptions around fat. Oh, okay. Like, um, yeah, we also did a podcast point. episode, you guys talking about the research behind nutrition and how bad it is conducted. And so there's literally a, a study out there for everyone's opinion, everyone's opinion. But what people fail to do is go into the weeds of each study to recognize, oh, there's, there's, there's issues here with how it was conducted. So if you guys want to listen to that podcast episode, I think it was like released back in August or September. September. It was one of our yeah. earlier episodes, but you know, like there is a research study showing that alcohol is good for you or wine's good for you, or, you know, we're, we're totally compartmentalizing nutrition and food and we're not comparing apples to apples. We're comparing oranges to oranges. So for instance, what do I mean by that? So they'll take a bunch of like vegans and vegetarians. If you're a vegetarian, you're most likely more health conscious than the average Joe, right? And then they'll take a bunch of meat eating Americans who are eating corn fed beef and like the standard American diet and they'll say, oh, look who's healthier. It's the vegetarians eating a bunch of vegetables. So these people are eating inflammatory meats and that's why we're always pro, like make sure it's organic beef that is like grass fed, grass finished because it does make a difference. But all of this research isn't done on these people that are eating vegetables and grass fed and grass finished beef. So again, it's comparing apples to oranges and not apples to apples. So. There is so many discrepancies when it comes to research. I highly recommend you guys go listen to that podcast episode because it is fan freaking tastic. Mm -hmm. um, we put a we as in he put a lot of effort into it because he we all know he's the brains of this operation, right? Like so. Speaking of saturated fats, there's there's a question from a member about cheese. Um, yes. So so Cecilia, hey, Johnny's mom, said to get good quality cheese. Any recommended brands for mozzarella and cheddar? So the, the key with cheese is first make sure that you can tolerate it because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that can't tolerate it. Right. And um, I don't care how healthy the cheese source is. If your body is not ready for dairy, even cheese, yeah. that's not going to be a good idea for you. But uh, ideally, cheese would be raw, um, meaning that uh, it, the, the milk that is used to produce the cheese is not pasteurized. Um, that can be difficult to find in a lot of places. Um, so organic is going to be your next best bet. Yeah. Um, but uh, specific brands, I I don't I don't, know. I don't think I have any. I, I would say honestly, a local brand would be best if you've Did got. Did you mention raw? Uh, raw, raw, yeah, raw I did cheese. say raw. Mm -hmm. Raw you organic raw, cheese yeah. is, is really what you want to look for on the label. But if you can find it from a local dairy farm and you know that they use grass fed um, and organic milk. That's gonna be the best thing you can do. Yeah. So. 
Okay, there are any other questions here? Let us know. I'm gonna scroll through here and see what we can answer. Um, Someone asked about... Favorite zinc supplement. Okay, so a couple of things to keep in mind with zinc. Uh, one, we can only absorb so much of it at a time. I think it's like seven or eight milligrams. I think it's like five to seven milligrams every five hours. Mm -hmm. So look at your zincs. If they have like more than 10 milligrams in them, uh, that's your, it's, it's mostly wasted. Um, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, one no, other... there, there, so there are products out there that like it's 80 milligrams of zinc. Why? Why? Why would you do that? And then a lot of people complain that their zinc is making them nauseous. Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably because it's not absorbable and it's like way too high in concentration. Zinc can be hard uh, to take mm -hmm. on an empty stomach for a lot of people. So, so the the lower doses that are kind of reaching our maximum absorption anyway are really ideal. Mm -hmm. So we like zinc liver chelate from Standard Process, um, but. Uh, you know, I, I don't think there's... The zinc from Nutri-Gold is pretty good too. Zinc zinc gold from Nutri-Gold is fine. I think it's a bit higher dose as well. Is it? I, I don't know. I don't know. Check. Um, I'm most familiar with zinc liver chelate. Like, I've never had anyone had an issue with it yet. No, I'll say the same the thing that I tell people all the time. Ideally, you'll get your zinc from food. And the, the two best sources of zinc, in my opinion, are oysters and clams. Mm -hmm. Um, whenever I tell that to people, for some reason they gag. I don't know why. Uh, but, uh, but seriously, oysters and clams are awesome sources of zinc. Um, so do that. Also, liver. Okay. First, uh, first place to start if having gut issues. Elimination diet, testing. Oh, man. That's you, Tris. Um, so the... I, I, I don't know that I would rush straight into an elimination diet because it's really complex. It can take months. And in the meantime, you're still feeling really lousy. Testing can be really helpful, but it can also be very expensive. Um, for instance, I, I like to run a food inflammation test with people that will tell us kind of how strongly their immune system is reacting to different foods. And while that can be a really good shortcut to cutting out things that are causing a stronger reaction right off the bat, uh, for one, we don't know how steady those results are. If we were to do the same test three times in a week, we might get completely different answers. I'm not sure and I'm not going to test because it would cost way too much money. But the other thing is that um, it is, it's a lot of money just to find that out. So yeah. what we like to do is always, always, always figure out upper digestion first. Yeah. We got to make sure that you're breaking down food. Otherwise, your body is not going to do well with it no matter you know, what kinds of things you're putting into your mouth. Um, so we always do the baking soda test very first. It's probably mm -hmm. in several places in Janique's Instagram. So go do the baking soda test, see if you have sufficient stomach acid. And then you wanna look at, is my gallbladder able to get bile out in there so that we can break down and emulsify fats properly? Right. And then look at your pancreatic enzymes. Do I have enough of the, the lipase and the protease and all those different enzymes that help break down food so that we can access all the different micronutrients. Yeah. Um, and once you've got that upper digestive stuff figured out, you might be there. That might be all that you need to do. But in a lot of people, we also have lower digestive issues because there's inflammation in the gut. There's dysbiosis with you know too many of the wrong kinds of bacteria or parasites or whatever it is down there. And, and in those cases, it can take a lot of work to get things rebalanced and get the body absorbing nutrients again. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's kind of where I would start. Start with the baking soda test. I would also cut out, I would cut out the five most inflammatory foods, which is grains, wheat, um, dairy, corn, soy, sugar. Like make sure you're cutting those out. When it comes to eating vegetables, because you're gonna increase your veggie intake to about eight servings a day, um, you have to cook like 90% of it because raw veggies, if you already have digestive distress, it's going to just make it worse. Mm -hmm. So start by cooking the majority of your vegetables all the time. Even with greens, if you have to steam them, then let's start steaming them until your gut can heal and repair itself to, to digest more hearty foods again. All right. Um, what kinds of diet and supplements do you recommend for PCOS? PCOS is okay sugar and pcos are just their enemies like you can't so you want to make sure you are cutting out the sugar completely you're stabilizing your blood glucose um you are eating high fat high veggie high protein like this is i think in my insta stories i spoke about like eating healthier snacks but checking for the carb content 
this is one of those cases where, yeah, it's healthier like chips, but it's still very carby. It's gonna like increase your inflammation, increase your blood glucose. So you really wanna watch the carbs there and just eat the complex carbs, which are like the vegetables. And what do you have to yeah, say about that? The, uh, Usually we'll see really high testosterone levels with mm -hmm. PCOS if we actually test the testosterone levels. And when I see those getting high, a lot of times I think liver. Um, so really supporting the liver can be really helpful there. And yes, Sorry, I'm yawning getting, every time, guys. getting good fats in there is really important, but also um, getting lots of fiber. So those uh, above mm -hmm. ground vegetables in particular yeah. can be really beneficial to help uh, kind of get the testosterone levels down and absolutely reducing the sugar intake, reducing the refined carb intake will make a huge difference there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but what I would really recommend anyone that I see that's got PCOS, I'm going to say you need to go on a 21 day liver support program right. um, and basically spend exactly. three weeks taking a load off your liver so that it can catch up, but also providing it with all sorts of really nutrient rich things that it can use to do its job more effectively. I really enjoyed doing that. 21 day cleanse was mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, the, the 21 day cleanse was gonna be hard. fantastic. I loved how I felt in it. Like I had so much energy. It was like the first time in months because I was dealing with adrenal fatigue. Um, can you talk about hypothyroidism? Low T3. So low T, okay, high cholesterol and low testosterone. Low T3 is a conversion issue because the thyroid produces T4, but then T4 needs to turn into T3. And that happens in the liver, the kidneys, and the GI tract. So um, if you're having dysfunction in your liver, your kidneys, and your D GI tract, you have to heal that. So there's some kind of inflammation going on, and it is resulting in low T3 uh, conversion. Let's see. With those, with those other two things, high cholesterol, low testosterone, I would also guess that there's high blood sugar, mm -hmm. um, which is basically metabolic syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, support the thyroid 100%. Make sure that you've got plenty of T3 so that your cells can access that. But you also need to really take care of the metabolic processes, which means cutting down on the sugar big time, getting more of the fibrous vegetables into the diet. And then there are a bunch of uh, really supportive herbs that can help with metabolic syndrome. Um, black pepper actually is a pretty good one there. But, um, but I swear, like all disease roads lead back to sugar. Like they, if I think... 90% of all of our health issues could be cured if we stopped eating so much sugar. And like our new normal in our society is not healthy for us, you know? And so, um, so because like, think of it, by the time we're all done with breakfast, we've all hit like our daily recommendation for sugar intake, you know, or well beyond that. And so that's not how our bodies were designed to handle food. Our bodies were designed to handle a lot of complex carbs, vegetables, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So again, just cutting out the sugars, cutting out the, the, the starchy foods and going back to complex carbs, lots of leafy greens, good proteins, good fats. And you know, it's interesting because people always ask like, why are we so pro animal protein? I'm like, well, I'm not pro animal protein. I think it's a really great way to get a lot of nutrient density, but if you take away breads and you take away starchy foods, you know, vegetables can be satiating to a degree, but unless you're coupling them with like good fats and proteins, you're gonna get hungry a lot. So I'd rather people transition to eating vegetables and proteins and fats than like lots of vegetables and corn and oats and grains and all of that kind of stuff, so. And, and honestly, <laughs> Almost everyone that we work with has B vitamin issues, uh, deficiencies yeah. specifically. And it is very difficult to get all the B vitamins that you need um, without doing the animal products. Not that you even can't. Even we do. Even, even we, we do. We should talk about um, that. But, uh, but B12 in particular, uh, you cannot get it from animal or from plant sources um, with a couple of very rare exceptions. But uh, that means that if you're not eating animal products, then you must absolutely be supplementing with B12. Yeah. Um, but what we find in general is that unless someone has a, a very strong opinion about staying away from animal products, it's just easiest to get those in, especially those organ meats. Mm -hmm. um, I could care less if a person decides I'm not gonna do animal protein anymore. Fine, I don't care. But 
Eat maybe, your vegetables. Maybe maybe do the organs. Definitely do the vegetables. Yeah, always do the vegetables. Um, the, the small fish, the sardines, and the anchovies. Yes. yes. Get that stuff in there, right? All those foods that no one eats. Um, they're so good for you. Yeah. Thank you, Luann, by the way. We love you. You're wonderful. You um, just said a nice comment. Oh, also on, for, on uh, low testosterone, real quick. Um, one thing that can make a huge difference, there are actually two things for men in particular. Uh, and I'm, I, mean, I guess I'm assuming men because you're saying testosterone, but women do need it as well. For men, American ginseng is fantastic for that. For men and women, tribulus, um, that's an herb, is fantastic for helping get testosterone up. So. There you go. Other than argon complex and clean eating, what else would you suggest for fertility issues? So we've kind of spoken about that a little bit. Sugar, like metabolic stuff, like getting a hold of that. Mm -hmm. And then I hate to say this, but I mean, get blood work done, right? There could be something that you're missing, especially with all my ladies that have fertility issues. Like, let's check your blood work, right? Let's just check everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, even like filling out a food diary for a few days, there is an app or a, a program called Chronometer. Um, and it, like, if you keep a food diary for three days and then go into Chronometer, sign up, it's free, put all of your food in there. All right. Like, I can, I, my clients write their food diaries for me and I check them and I'm like, okay, we need to change this and cut this up, blah, blah, blah. You guys don't have to pay me to do that. Just go to Chronometer and put all your food in and see where your deficiencies are because it's gonna measure all your vitamins and your minerals and your proteins and your fats and, and it's gonna tell you like, oh wow, you're not getting enough of this. You're not getting enough of that. And so then you can start filling in the gaps with supplementation or increasing certain foods and that kind of stuff. But also keep in mind that Chronometer is going to use, do they use RDAs and RDIs for their recommendations? So. so. So they're basically saying, we need to get you to kind of what the minimum recommendations are on these different levels. And that is not the same as what's ideal for you. So, you know, speaking of the B vitamins again, um, you've probably maybe heard of the MTHFR gene mutation. Uh, Janik and I both have that, which means our kids are just screwed. Um, but the idea is that we're not very efficient with our folate usage, so right. to speak, which means our bodies have a really hard time methylating or turning genes on and off. Um, it also means our bodies have a hard time converting homocysteine, which is very inflammatory, into methionine, which is actually a more usable and, and helpful right. molecule. And, and so for us, we have to make sure we're getting a lot more of the B vitamins, especially folate, especially riboflavin, we have to make sure we're getting extra choline. Um, I need the equivalent of seven eggs worth of choline a day. Janique needs nine, the equivalent of nine eggs worth, which is not to say that we need to be eating all those eggs, but that's a lot of choline that we need to be getting uh, in combination of all our foods. A lot of which, by the way, those foods are animal products again. Basically what he's saying is my genes suck. Um, what I'm saying oh, is that we have, I mean, obviously, I, you know, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer at the age of 33. So <laughs> and I got Graves' disease neither, at 27. Neither yeah. of us have the most optimal genes, which is where diet really comes in. So don't, don't aim for the minimum. Aim for what helps you to feel good. And that might mean that you have to do an awful lot of extra in some areas. So someone asked, where do you find the 21 day detox? Um, you can, like, we sell it. Um, if you, what's the best way yeah, someone you, wants to do it? You have to get in touch with us. Um, we have some questions we've got to ask you, yeah. and there's some materials we need to send you. I actually, the so the 21-day the detox that we use is not the same one that we used to use um, in the sense that we used to go with the out-of-the-box standard process purification program. But there are some big issues with a couple of the products that they use on that, um, and I've found better options. So we we have our own sort day. of program now. That, we should do like a group 21 day detox. Yeah, maybe we should. That would be fun. If you guys want to do like a group, we'll do it with you guys. And maybe we say, hey, May 1st, we're doing the 21 day detox. Whoever's in, do it with us, and we can do like a group thing. You okay. Know? That would That'd yeah, be fun. We'll, we'll, we'll plan on doing that. Um, but uh, but yeah, in the meantime, if you want to get started on it, reach out to us, help at probohealth.com. 
um, we can help you get started on that. But it is really the best way to clear out liver stuff. And most people do have liver stuff going on. This is a great question. Does a healthy person need to take so many supplements? You guys take a lot and I'm wondering why when you eat so well. I'm a little confused or discouraged. It's confusing, discouraged me. So let's talk about genetics for a second. Um, Tristan just mentioned how really crappy my genes are. Um, because I methylate at the capacity of like 25%, whereas someone who doesn't have a MTHFR gene mutation or homozygous MTHFR gene mutation for, what is it, C66T, whatever, whichever gene that is, um, they C667T. methylate... C667T. 7T, thank you. Uh, yeah. um, so if you are not heterozygous for that, then you're methylating at like 75% or 100%. So it's like we are all starting a race, but I'm starting half a mile behind everyone. So I supplement because I have to because of my genes. Um, also, let's talk about food nutrition and soil integrity and all that kind of stuff. So 50 years ago, an orange, if you had to compare an orange to um, the oranges from 50 years ago to oranges today, they were like, 16 times more nutrient dense. So why do we have a nutrient density issue? Well, let's look at our farming practices and our soils. Our, and this is why we are so, every, okay, remember everyone started doing the, the celery juice craze and they all started feeling amazing? It's because they were so depleted in minerals. I talk about minerals all the time. We're supposed to be getting our minerals from our food. It's supposed to be sucked out of the soil but our soils are so depleted, you guys. Like they're so depleted. And so we are getting like healthy food that has like 50% of what it used to have 50 years ago or 25% of what it used to have 50 years ago. Um, so we supplement just because, you know, I I am managing, I, I just, checked my my ancestry dna and i put it through prometheus and it told me all of these um don't do that by the way don't 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 do that it'll give you so much anxiety so much anxiety but it made a lot of sense because when i put mine through uh prometheus it was like oh you're four times more likely to get graves disease i'm like well i already got that so thanks but you know it also told me that there are other certain um weaknesses in my dna that i've always known about because this is something I don't talk about, but when I was a kid, I was seeing doctors almost weekly for health issues. Like we couldn't figure out what was going on with me. I don't talk about that a lot. I talk about the Graves disease, but I don't talk about what led up to the Graves disease, right? Like I, um, when I was 20 years old, I felt like I was in an 80 year old body. I couldn't sit for longer than 15 minutes. My back ached all the time. I had like tendonitis. I had headaches all the time. I lived on ibuprofen. And I had a doctor tell me, oh, you'd probably need like a complete spinal fusion by the time you're 30. And I was like, well, that's great. Like, I, I actually don't talk about that a lot, but that's because, you know, there are some genetic factors for me that I have, that I know about, that I control now. And I feel better than I ever have my entire life. And I didn't have any doctor figure that out for me. We had to figure it out on my own, right? And so it's just, it's the combination of Soil depletion, you know, farming practices, um, genetics. The fact that we don't eat organ meats anymore. Mm -hmm. I keep harping on this today. I always right. harp on this, but but we used to eat much more nutrient dense things than we do today, right. and and so now we have to make up for. It. But also keep in mind that it's our business. Like we mm -hmm. we literally sell supplements for a living. So we experiment and, on it. And ourselves. so of course we're going to use them. Yeah. It would be very hypocritical of us to tell people you need to take these and for us to not be taking anything ourselves. Right. So not only are we working on our own stuff with it, because we want to optimize our health, not just get by. But we also want to make sure that what we're telling people to do is something that we can kind of give a, a personal testimony of ourselves. Um, so yeah, we've got a massive drawer full of supplements that we take every single day. It's really big. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't recommend everybody do that, nor do I believe you have to do that to live a really optimal thriving lifestyle. Um, that's, just, that's just our, you know, where we are in life. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. So right. don't, don't let that frustrate you or get you down. Right. Um, just know that if you are not where you wanna be with your health, 
then yes, you are going to have to go through a period of time where you are kind of going over the top with these nutrients in order to get your body where it needs to be. But that doesn't have to be a permanent thing in most cases, unless your gallbladder was taken out, in which case, yeah, you gotta do that cola call for the rest of your life. Right, so yeah. I hopefully that answered your guys' questions. Um, what are, are you a fan of milk thistle? I, yes, big fan. I don't understand how much how much drops we're supposed to take. That's gonna depend on the product. Right. Um, the, the milk thistle that we like is actually right. a tablet and they're, they're little teeny tiny tablets and you only do like one a day. Um, and that, and for cases. everyone else that doesn't know what milk thistle does, it helps with liver detoxification and support. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Drinking like milk thistle tea every day wouldn't hurt as well. It's so great. Um, alrighty. Yeah, but, but on the, the tinctures, um, I don't know, you probably go by what the label says unless a practitioner that you're working with tells you something different. Mm -hmm. That's that's the best we can say just because there's so many products out there. Uh, Taryn Comer, uh, message me so I can send you uh, my, right here. Yeah, okay. Um, the UTI that's been hanging around. Message me so I can send you like my little protocol that I spoke about a couple weeks ago and I'll send that to you. Um, sorry. Oh, it's it's in front of it's this. Talking. Sorry. Oh no. What did I'm I do sorry, with those comments? Just do it. Just do it. Um, where do I find info on the twenty one day detox? Yeah, so, so message us. Send an send an email to help mm -hmm. at probohealth.com. We can give you information on that. Greens hurt my stomach even when cooked. So try juice them. You might have to juice them if you can, or try the greens powders. See if that's a little bit easier. Or digestive enzymes. Like figure out your upper GI issues. Yeah, it, it might be an upper GI issue. You might have an enzyme that's low. You might have a, a bacterial overgrowth situation and it's actually FODMAPs that are contributing to the problem. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of different possibilities with that. Yeah. So oh, sorry. that one's tricky. I thought you were just touching my leg. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm nicely moving it out of the way. <laughs> Um, do you still like the Nutrigold Magnesium mm -hmm. supplement? Yes, love it. I do a lot of blood it. chems where we're actually looking at um, the serum magnesium. And so far, everyone I've seen that's in the optimal range for their magnesium levels, which is not very many people, they've all been taking Nutrigold's magnesium. Yeah. It is such a fantastic product and the price is very reasonable. Um, I love the Easy Mag from Standard Process as well, but it's like two bucks a day to, to get in and it's not it's a very expensive. high dose. So, um, so the Nutrigold is just ideal. That well, you way. can rotate them, you know, like yeah. do the Nutrigold one day and then the easy mag the other day. You could, you could, but for the purposes of getting your serum magnesium in a good place, the magnesium gold does the trick. Um, I haven't tested enough people on their red blood cell magnesium, which is maybe even more important. So I might start doing more of that in the future to see if uh, we're, we're accomplishing it. But, um, but yeah, Nutrigold's product is fantastic that way. Um, okay, how do you feel about ketosis, the keto mm -hmm. diet? A doctor I follow has said very little veggies. Ugh. Well, so, so we did a, a podcast episode yeah. on different diets, one of our earlier episodes as well. We talked about keto. The biggest issue that we see with keto is that people do cut out vegetables. And while there's an argument to be made for the whole carnivore thing and cutting out all sorts of foods that could be problematic in order to relieve symptoms, long term, don't love it. Um, we, we think veggies are awesome and we're never gonna right. change our minds about that, so. Vegetables are healing foods, guys. They have micronutrients necessary to allow the body to just carry out its metabolic functions. You take that away, and over time, you're just gonna become more and more depleted. So anytime anyone villainizes greens and vegetables, like I have a big problem with that because we should all be having a love affair with vegetables. We really should. Like it's the one thing that has kept us alive for millions of years. All right, so that being said, on the keto diet, um, the, the one I like the best is actually Mark Sissons, and he was one of the originals. He's like the OG in this area. His rules with keto are, up to 50 grams of carbs a day, which is fairly generous, but above ground vegetables don't count against that limit, mm -hmm. which means that you can have as many of those above ground, above ground mm -hmm. high fiber vegetables as you like. Yeah. And otherwise, so basically what he's saying is cut out the refined carbs, don't go crazy with the root vegetables, and 
and make sure you're getting plenty of good fats, yeah. which is basically what we are big proponents of anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you really want to do keto right, you should be checking your ketosis levels with a blood monitor and you're going to have to play around to see what works for you. Just don't think that it's a really good thing to cut out vegetables and live off of cheese and beef sticks and that you're going to have good health long term. Um, you're going to solve some problems and cause others. So, Okay, Krista, hi. Her question is, do you have an anxiety protocol that you recommend generally, especially during this time? I know you recommended a few products recently. Yeah, we'll talk about that more tonight as well. Um, I, I hesitate to recommend products for anxiety because I, in a lot of cases, anxiety isn't really a nutrient deficiency. It certainly can be, but a lot of times it's more of a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. And if we don't change our behaviors, then we're not going to fix it with exogenous substances. So that's what a lot of people are doing, right? They have these really bad patterns and really bad diets, but then they're taking anti-anxiety medications and it gets them by, but they basically are stuck on that for the rest of their life, plus the side effects that come from it. So you first need to make sure you've got your diet down with plenty of good B vitamin rich foods. And then you need to start getting yourself on a program where you are taking care of yourself and, and treat it like a job because yeah. it really is the most important job you have Truly. to keep yourself in a good headspace. And if you've got all that down, then the recommendations I can make on that would include things like Nevitin, um, which is a product from MediHerb. Uh, Kava can be really great there. Um, what else is really good in those senses? Valerian root is a fantastic one. What was St. John's work for? St. John's work can also be really helpful in cases of depression, but be careful with it because it can interact with antidepressant medications. Um, so it's not for everybody, but that's also a good possibility. Um, and then a product I really, really love for that is called Minchex. And it's got a few different uh, glandular things in it. So it's a great complement to the herbs that I mentioned. There you go. Do you like calm? I like calm for a laxative effect. That's what I like it for. I don't, I thing. don't like it at all because magnesium shouldn't be a laxative. But sometimes you have to use it. Otherwise, people are using Marilax. That's, that's one topic we well, don't agree on. Well, it's better than that. Uh-oh, oh, whoopsie. Um, I have my gallbladder taken out. I heard you say something about having to take something to supplement when you have it removed, and I missed what you said. Oh, Colacol. So I, Colacol is what you should take. I've done several videos on that. Look for my post with the beets. Um, and then, the, like, I think I did two stories on gallbladder health. Um, so go ahead and check those out. This is Abby Sierra. I to say hi. She, she needs some love. Um, bile, bile support is what you need. If you don't have a gallbladder, it means you have no storage pouch for your bile, which means that your liver produces it and it drips straight into your small intestine. Um, so we need to make up for that because if you are eating fat, which you should be, we need to emulsify that fat so that it can be absorbed, all those good fatty acids. So, so bile supplementation is the key. We like Colacol from Standard Process. It's um, ox bile. Um, or bile salts, but uh, there are lots of products out there that have ox bile or different types of bile there replacement. So, how far back does blood work show? Three months? Yeah, we like to review blood work within three months. Um, Otherwise, it's yeah, yeah. We kind of look at it as a three month thing, but but what will usually happen is the the first time we do blood work, we get a pretty comprehensive list of markers checked so that we don't miss anything. But then everything that looks pretty good, we don't need to recheck that for like a year. Um, so when we do a follow-up a few months later, um, we're only checking like, you know, 25% of what we looked at originally. And it's a lot more efficient going forward. So mm, have we missed anything? Is emailing Prova Health the best way to contact you? So honestly, if you know you want to get some blood work done or you want to do like a consult. Um, you can go to gutsy.ch forward slash consult and just schedule that online so you don't even have to call in. If you want to get a hair analysis done, you do need to call in. So that's 801-3... Nope, that's my cell number. 
1765. I'm going to put in the comments here, guys. Sorry. Give me a second. 801-691-1765. So call the office. Bailey is in the office putting orders together because we're still doing like orders. So if you want products and stuff, you can order online at provohealth.com. Um, we, we are still doing the hair analyses if you're local. So you come in, Bailey pulls your hair and then you leave and then we schedule a time to go over it over the phone. So we're doing social distancing kind of like that if you want, but if you want a phone consult, like a one hour phone consult, uh, you can just schedule that at gutsy.ch forward slash consult, consults, mm -hmm. consult. Mm -hmm singular not plural mm -hmm. and then if you want to do blood work if you know you want to move forward with blood work you go to gutsy.ch forward slash blood and then you start filling out the paperwork there and getting the process taken care of there so um i should put these here okay hold on gutsy.ch forward slash blood and then gutsy.ch forward slash consult mm -hmm. And then yes, and then you can go and call the number 801-691-1765 to do the hair analysis. Now the difference between the hair analysis and blood, let's talk about that. If you're pretty new for with your like healing journey and you have no idea where to start, and you don't really quite know what's going on, um, I think a hair analysis is an incredible place to start because it's also, if you're local, and if you're local, yes, we need we need your physical presence yeah. to do it. We need like your hair pulled within three minutes. Otherwise, the root starts to oxidize and gives us false whatevers. But um, that's a really good place to start. If you are not local and you want answers, if you have fertility issues, if you have a very complex health issue that you have seen millions of doctors and you know like you've tried multiple diets, you you're you're not new to this game and you know quite a bit about nutrition and your health i would recommend blood work that helps us fine-tune a ton fine-tuning can be very overwhelming without understanding the basics so the hair analysis goes over the basics all right so that's what i would recommend you can still do the blood cam if you are still very new to this world it's oh, totally fine like yeah. you don't you it like like Tristan will break it. Tristan does the blood cam. I do the hair analysis. Tristan will break it down um, really, really like to where you're at and will help you figure out your next steps on what to do and how to heal and if you need to go to hospital or not. It has happened where we've had, where he reviews blood work and he's like, you should go to a hospital in like the next 24 hours because something's really bad here. So um, if that has happened before. Uh, what else, guys? I think that's it. I think we answered Well, there was a uh, this cheat sheet or one step guide for which vitamins are good for oh. your and family. We don't have anything so, like that. Actually, the membership will have one of those. But we're working on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So I am creating a membership, you guys, where um, it, it includes your meal plans every week. So I design the meals, and you get the meal prep protocols, and you get the shopping list, and you get the recipes. Um, and it's different every week. And you can pick between three, the intermittent fasting, the full menu plan, or the super simple menu plan. But then there's another tier to the membership where you can get the cheat sheets. We have two minutes left, so we're going to end this. So the cheat sheets, you get a cheat sheet every week. The, and you want to start with cheat sheet one, where it's cleaning out your pantry. And then cheat sheet two is like cleaning out your fridge. Cheat sheet three is every spice you should probably have. And then your condiments. And then um, cheat sheets for Costco, cheat sheets for Trader Joe's, like... And then cheat sheets for supplementations for kids and illnesses and all these things. So like as the months go by, you're going to become an expert in one area and then another area and then another area. And so it's just, it's literally hand holding you through the process that is going to be relaunched sometime this month, hopefully, um, because it requires a lot of energy and a lot of work for my team. And a, it's a lot of information to put together on paper. It's actually very time consuming. So we're trying to get that together for you guys. Hopefully that will be released. I will talk about it more and more um, as the weeks go by. So hang in there and that's it. We gotta go. Otherwise this is gonna get deleted. Uh -oh. So talk to you guys later. I Hopefully that was helpful. Bye. See ya. Bye. Yay, it's saved. Does that save it or just put it in the story? It put it in the story.
And then we can end up here. Oh, too. yeah. Bye, guys. Bye.